Good morning. Good morning. It's Saturday. Um, entirely too early for me to be awake right now. But it's been a long time since I've made a video and I wanted to make a video. So here we go. Um, as most of you know, I am writing my second book. I've been writing my second book for a while now. <laughs> and I like to collect books to study other people's writing styles from time to time. Um, you know, my goal in life is to read more books. It doesn't mean that I necessarily do. It just means that I have a goal that I want to. <laughs> well, I came across this little treasure in a dollar store, I think, or Aldi's or, um, not Aldi's, I meant Oli's, something like that. Um, this is it. The Complete Writings of Florence Scovel Shen for Women, The Ageless Wisdom for Today, or Her Ageless Wisdom for Today. I sat down and I said, you know what, I'm going to read one chapter, just one, and see how I liked it. And a couple of the chapters, let me just kind of give you a little imagery here. The Game of Life and How to Play It, Your Word is Your Wand. The Secret Door to Success, The Power of the Spoken Word. I said, hmm, that's interesting. I opened it, and there's a biography of this woman, Florence. I guess it's Scovel, Scovel. I, I don't know. I have no idea. I am just now educating myself um, on her from 1899. So... This is very seasoned. <laughs> um, there's a brief biography in here. I did not read it because I'm like, mm, well, if I like it, I'll go back and read about her later. And I skipped to chapter one, the game. So I thought that we would do something a little different today. It's been a long time, too long since I've done a vlog, and this is really something that I know I need to be more um, repetitive on. So I figured, you know, I've had a lot of uh, feedback that I should talk about topics that are not so easily discussed. I kind of talk about topics that people secretly struggle with all the time, but I'm blunt enough to say things at times. I just say what we're all thinking. So... I read the first chapter of this book and it really universally spoke to me and I thought, okay, well, let me give this a shot. Let me do a vlog about this. I'm going to start reading this book and I want to kind of do chapter by chapter discussions because it's so relevant to our day and time. It's, it's so relevant to all of us. Let me just read you a little bit about this. My dad, for years and years and years, would tell me all the time that there is a big difference um, in your psyche, your subconscious, and basically the, the there's another one. So the subconscious, the conscious, and the super conscious. The subconscious is simply power without direction. It is like stem or elect steam or electricity, and it does what it is directed to do. It has no power of induction. Whatever a woman feels deeply or images clearly is impressed upon the subconscious mind and carried out in the minutest detail. This is incredible because, you know, my dad would always say this to me, and this is just within the last few years, so it was kind of just more irritating than it was um, instructional or, or, you know, constructive because this didn't used to be his philosophy. Um, he would say, instead of saying, I'm sorry, he would correct us every time and tell us to say, I apologize. Because when you say, I'm sorry, he would say, your subconscious hears I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm just a sorry person. Like, I'm a sorry individual. Like, I'm not worth anything. Instead of, 
I apologize because it is the most literal portion of your brain. So by redirecting what you speak and what your subconscious is kind of seeing, you're able to redirect kind of your your path, kind of. It was really interesting. And I always thought he was full of crap. Not like, I mean, it just was... Nah, whatever, it's silly, you know? So here's the interesting part. I'm reading this book from the 1800s, and of course, this is what it says. I mean, here's a really good statement, though. Um, talking about, you know, even biblical terms. Now, before you guys go and read this, first of all, let me explain this. I was raised Southern Baptist. You know, I... Am entitled to my own belief. Um, this does have a lot of scripture in it, but it is not a devotional. This has got a lot of um, Plato in it. Now, I'm, I'm literally only on the second chapter so far, uh, which is also really good. Um, so it's more of historical philosophers and not just like a scripture devotion. Um, so you can go in and have, you know, this type, you can read it chapter by chapter and not be offended. It's just simply saying like how many places throughout history it's circling around giving the same exact dictation as Florence. Like she's labeled as a truth speaker. She's more like a, like a motivational speaker, like a life coach. That's what she was called back in the 1800s so essentially I mean it's just motivational it's just kind of like a different perspective on the universe and how it works not necessarily you know that there's one belief that's correct or anything like that Um, there's no way that you can tell me that there's there's not a higher power. May it be whatever it is that you believe that it is, you know. There is a bigger purpose. So, anyways, going back to the book, the first chapter is called The Game. Now, in the beginning it says, All power is given to each woman to bring her heaven upon her earth through right thinking, This is the goal of the game of life. Let me read this to you what I've outlined. Whatsoever a woman soweth, that shall she also reap. This means that whatever a woman sends out in the world or deed will return to her. What she gives, she will receive. Now listen closely. If she gives hate, she will receive hate. If she gives love, she will receive love. If she gives criticism, she will receive criticism. If she lies, she will be lied to you. If she cheats, she will be cheated. We are taught also that the imagery facility plays a leading part in the game of life. Keep thy heart or imagination with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now that's outlined in Proverbs 4.23. This means that what a woman images sooner or later externalizes in her affairs. I know of someone who feared a certain disease. It's a very rare disease and difficult to get. But she pictured it continually and read about it until it manifested in her body. She died the victim of distorted image by distorted imagination. So to successfully play the game of life, we must train the imaging faculty. A person with an imaging faculty trained to image only good brings into her life every righteous desire of her heart health wealth love friendships perfect self-expression her highest ideals that's the subconscious the conscious and the super subconscious so basically what this this chapter by this lady is telling us is what you put out there that's what you're going to receive So if you're constantly thinking negativity, if you're constantly over and over and over imagining that the situation is going to go in the most negative way possible, it's going to. If you bring bad energy into your 
your personal space, your personal universe, that's what you're going to get back is bad energy. Sometimes you have to step back and look at those things in your life that are creating such a negative energy on you or bringing you down or just making you feel, you know, and, and take those out. You've got to cut them out because that's what they're doing. They're taking your energy away. They're bringing you down. You've got to be around the same type of energy that you're looking for. Like your friends and the people that you make your own choices to be around are the ones that you see a little bit of yourself in. So if you're around these people and you're seeing, I don't, I don't like that behavior. I don't, I don't like that. Or, you know, you're feeling disrespected or you're feeling uncomfortable. Those are the people that you should probably kind of cut away from, you know, step out of their life. It's not for you. You need to have more of a positive energy. Like I hear it all the time, all the time. And this is what it's basically saying. Another example you know, ask and you shall receive. Like, if you want it bad enough, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, it's going to happen. You can look at it from all these different perspectives. That's what religion is, is it's basically the same type of philosophy, but in different perspectives. Um, some people have different, you know, idealistics of that perspective. But in a hall, you know, treat others the way that you want to be treated. That's still it, just coming full circle. The conscious mind has been called the mortal or the canal mind. It is the human mind and sees life as it appears to be. It sees death, disaster, sickness, poverty, and limitation of every kind. And it impresses on the subconscious. The superconscious mind is the God mind within each of us. It is the realm of perfect ideas. In it is the perfect pattern, spoke of by Plato, or the divine design. For there is a divine design for each person. This is so incredible. There is a place that you are to fill that no one else can fill. Something you're to do which no one else can do. There was a time where it finally hit me and I realized, you know, somebody said, how do you do it? Like, how do you stay positive? Like, how, how? And all of a sudden, I saw it so clear, like I was able to inhale and kind of just understand and have a peace that there's a purpose for me. There's a purpose for my life, just like there's a purpose for you and your life. Someday, someone is going to go through something that I'm going to be the only person that's going to be able to empathize with them or like, like that's the reason that this went through, that I went through this so that I could be able to help someone else through it, you know, that was in a similar situation to mine, you know, everyone has a purpose. It's really cool because you are made for something. There's something extraordinary out there for you to have as your place. Like you have your own, like you have your own little role here, you know? Like you have something that is by divine right, your place. Like there's a reason for everything. I'm starting to notice like, I made a video a couple of weeks ago and I never posted it. That video was a very vulnerable 
moment for me where I had discussed things coming back full circle. I, I kind of finally digested the realization that karma is a real thing, you know, no matter what God you believe in, no matter what, you know, religion you practice, if you do it all, but it is very true that everything comes full circle. There is karma. If you speak it, your words have so much power. You know, you speak negativity, they say negativity comes right back to you. So if you've ever noticed, when you point at someone, you know, you're saying, or you're sitting here pointing at them or whatever, you're pointing one at that person, okay? You're pointing one at the universe and you're pointing three back at yourself. Isn't that crazy? That's so true though, you know? Like you're damning one person, you're damning the universe, and you're damning yourself back three times fold. The power of your word is so much bigger than you realize, I guess, much bigger than I realize. You know, you speak out negativity and you're going to receive negativity. If you speak out negativity, not only is it going to go to that person, it's going to go to the universe and it's going to come back to you as well. But same difference though. If you speak positivity, it's going to go out to that person. It's going to go out to the universe and then it's going to go three back to you as well. So that's why it's so important to just work on changing that mentality. I guess work on seeing things in a different perspective. Like at, at most, this is the funniest thing, but I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth and it's so silly. I started in the most minute way. Again, my dad would always say, Anytime someone asked him how his day was going or, hey, how you doing? You know, he'd say, live in the dream every single time. No matter how frustrating his day was, you could tell maybe in his, you know, tone, but it was the words, I'm living the dream. And he challenged me one day to say that same reply anytime someone asked me. And at first it was, you know, not something I was happy about. I was a little whatever about it, <laughs> but I did. And then I really did. And then that became my trademark answer, I guess. And people would always laugh. Like people would just be like, haha, you know, and I'd say, you know, yeah, I mean, I am, I'm living in America. I'm all right. I'm healthy. I have a roof over my head and taking it one single day at a time, you know, for the most part I have anything that I could possibly need and want, you know? So despite everything that I could be upset about, I have so much good. There's so much to be grateful for. There's so many moments that I've missed out on because I was so blinded by things that never even manifested, thank God, you know? But when you're seeing that image and you're driving down the road and all of a sudden your mind just kind of drifts off, you're just sitting there and your mind drifts off and you think about the most worst case scenario like mine would be I would have anxiety so bad driving like you know what if I crossed over a bridge and my car somehow flew off the bridge and I landed in you know water and I can't swim and I have my two babies with me like am I gonna have to choose who I save because I can barely save myself like what if nobody gets to me is there anything in my car that I have to be able to open the windows? What type of tools do I have? How am I going to do this? Like I would play it over and over and over. And every single time the scenario would change as well. Like maybe it was raining 
or maybe I was on a deserted island, or maybe my car flipped, or, you know, it would be just, it would, it would get intense. It would, I would have anxiety attacks just thinking about some hypothetical worst case scenario situation, you know, that's in my subconscious asking to happen because I'm having to prepare for it. You know, that's, that's not anything that I want to happen. So when you're having these negativity come in, like you you feel yourself drifting off, you got to completely redirect that thought. You got to completely stop that thought and say, no, mm -mm, nope, something else, flowers, sunshine, anything, you know, take, take my mind off that negative negative. Activity. Another really good insert that I want to read to you um, is nothing but fear and doubt stands between a woman and her highest ideas and every desire of her heart. When a woman can wish without worrying, every desire will be instantly fulfilled. I will explain more fully in a following chapter the scientific reason for this and how fear must be erased from the conscientiousness. It is your only enemy. Fear of lack, feel of fear of failure, fear of sickness, fear of loss, and a feeling of insecurity on some plane. Why are ye feel fearful, O oh, ye of little faith? So we can see we must substitute faith for fear. For fear is only inverted faith. It is faith in evil instead of good. So you gotta have a little faith. That's incredible, isn't it? Fear. Fear is the inverted faith. Hmm. Fear is the inverted faith. That's crazy. When you think about it, fear is you just imagining the bad. And faith is believing in the good. You know? Fear is... There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Like it used to, I, I used to hear that all the time growing up. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. And I was like, I mean, yeah. But, and wow, isn't that crazy? Like that makes sense. Because why worry? It will probably never happen. <laughs> but, you know, I felt like it was pretty good with this being the first little, um, there's, you know, not a whole lot in here that I don't agree with, so I wanted to share it with you so far. I really liked it. The ending statement for this chapter is Proverbs eighteen twenty one, and it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Wow. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And fear is just inverted faith. How crazy is that? Well, it's something to think about. And I definitely wanted to share that with you guys. Pretty cool. Um, I'd love to know what type of stuff you would like to speak about in these vlogs. I'd love some interaction if you guys are interested. Um, got some big news coming up. Hopefully on Monday we'll have some more information. I'm excited. Okay, well, have a great day, guys. Have a good weekend, and till next time, bye.